Let's continue making my scripts available for everyone. Introducing SETI Astro's Editing Suite. Welcome to SETI Astro. Hop on over to SETIastro.com and under Astro Programs, you'll see our Cosmic Clarity, What's in My Sky, Statistical Stretch. I'll keep Statistical Stretch as a, as a standalone for those that just want that. But for the rest of you, go ahead and click on SETI Astro's Editing Suite. It'll take you to a new page. I have version one available right now. This will incorporate statistical stretch, star stretch, narrow band to RGB stars, halo be gone, and continuum subtraction. You can click the link here or any of the images to take you to the drive to download it. I would also encourage everybody to hop over to my Pix Insight scripts page because a lot of what I've incorporated in SETI Astro's editing suite, I have standalone videos for star stretch, narrow band RGB stars, multiple ones for statistical stretch, continuum subtraction, and halo be gone. Once you're in the drive, go ahead and select the version you need for your operating system. We have Windows, Mac, and two different ones for Linux. Linux legacy should work on everybody's, um, but if you do have the, the newest Linux, you can go ahead and get the SETI Astro Suite Linux. You may get a Windows protected your PC when you first open the file. Uh, Mac has its own pop-up message for it where you got to go into privacy and security. For a Windows user, you just click more info and run anyway. This will open my editing suite. By the way, if anybody has a better name for this, I'm open to changing the, the name of the program too. But we have tabs at the top, statistical stretch, narrowband to RGB stars, star stretch, halo be gone, and continuum subtraction. So let's just, just run through them. I think everybody's familiar with statistical stretch. It functions the same way as the standalone statistical stretch. You can go ahead and, and choose your fits or your TIFF file. You can click a preview the stretch. You can make the window bigger, zoom in and out buttons. It has the linked or unlinked version. And then you can go ahead and, and save your stretched image. You can save it as a TIFF, PNG, or FITS. For narrow band to RGB stars, I think this is hugely important. A lot of people shoot RGB stars just for RGB stars when they're doing narrow band data. I never do. I use my narrow band to RGB stars and don't waste any time taking RGB data just for stars. Take as much time as you can for your narrow band data. You'll need to provide either a mono H alpha image an O3 image. You could have a optional S2 image as well. Or if you're shooting one shot color camera with a dual band narrow band filter, you could just extract the stars and put your one shot color stars only image in here. So I have H alpha stars, O3 stars, and S2 stars. These are all linear. And then just click preview combined image. And it's gonna go ahead and combine them into an RGB star palette. Uh, I do have a slider here to adjust the H alpha to O3 ratio, which will make the stars a little bluer if you slide it over to the right, and a little more teal if you slide it over to the left. And then I also have enable stars stretch uh, so that they're nice and nonlinear when you go ahead and save your image. For star stretch, this will be a stars only image to take it from a linear to a nonlinear state. So after you extract your stars in the, the linear state, a lot of times people just have a, a difficult time getting a, a good stretch on your stars. So you select your stars only image. They could be mono or color. And it has a stretch amount. You could update the, the preview. And it has a, an optional color boost. So you can 
play with how much saturation are in your stars prior to actually saving them. For Halo Be Gone, this greatly reduces the halos around stars. If you find yourself with like uh, blue halos or just fuzzy patches around your stars after you extract them and, and you've stretched them into a nonlinear state, there is an option for linear data but behind the scenes it's just gonna stretch it and apply the halo reduction and put it back in a linear state anyways. It's just best to use nonlinear data. Go ahead and load up your image and there's various reductions amounts. So we'll go ahead and, and zoom in so it, it'll be a little easier to see on YouTube. This is the, the lowest setting. You could always just click the, the preview refresh. If you go up one tick You'll see it, it already greatly tapped down the, the halos around the stars. If you go all the way to the right, there's almost going to be no star color or halos left. There'll just be a bunch of white dots. But it, it could be hugely beneficial for those of you that do experience some halos around your stars. And then for continuum subtraction... If you haven't done continuum subtraction yet, I highly recommend watching my videos on it. Uh, but this is this is the method in which all these people are discovering these these new nebula and, and all that out there. You have to take your, your narrow band and broadband data and subtract them in such a way that there's only the narrow band signal left, right? Because even on a, a three nanometer filter, you're still getting normal broadband emission red light into it as well as your hydrogen or your sulfur or your oxygen emission as well. You want to get rid of that continuum light and see the gas emissions solely. So you'll have to load in your narrow band data and your broadband data. So for H alpha, you're going to use the red channel for sulfur, you're going to use the red channel. And then for oxygen, you should use the green channel. Once those are loaded in, you can click execute. And behind the scenes, it's going to do a bunch. It needs to combine the image, do a background neutralization, color calibration, perform a subtraction, stretch it to a nonlinear state, and then do a median subtraction again. So this is Andromeda. This is the hydrogen gas in Andromeda. So if we zoom in now, you can see that this is just solely the hydrogen emissions coming out of Andromeda. That's what continuum subtraction is used for. It's to isolate those narrowband emissions solely against the continuum of the background. And once you have it in the preview, you can go ahead and save your continuum subtracted image as well. And again, you can go ahead and save them as TIFFs, PNGs, or FITs. Well, I hope those running in Cyril or Deep Sky Stacker and GIMP can get a lot of use out of uh, all my various tools here. I know it's made a, a big change in the workflow for a lot in PixInsight, and I'm hoping that uh, this will get out to the, the broader audience and, and help the community in a more general sense. I want to thank my channel members. Uh, they get early access to these builds as I'm making them. So they always get to see kind of behind the curtain of, of what's coming and, and what new things are getting worked on. If you want to hop over to the Discord server, I'm active on there and you could ask questions and the community is really great on there. Please comment, like, and subscribe.